This is a videotape deposition of Donald Myers beginning at 2.35 p.m. on May 28, 2010 in the matter of Francois Choquette versus Church of Scientology, case number RIC 538-634, taken at 1325 Spruce Street in Riverside, California. May we have introductions beginning with counsel, please. Kendrick Moxon for the defendants. David Cantrell also for the defendants. Boyd Patterson with the CSI. Mr. Chiquette, you're here. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Francois Chiquette. Okay. Yeah, Oh, yes. So, Could you I, please state your uh, name and spell it for the record. Uh, my name is Donald James Myers, uh, D O N A L D J A M E S M Y E R S. Mr. Myers, do you have any recording devices? No. On your person? Do you have a cell phone? I have a cell phone. Is it turned off? Let's turn it off. Mr. Chickett, do you have any recording device? No. Thank you. You were served with a subpoena to appear today? Yes. Correct? Yes. Do you understand the significance of the uh, oath you just took? Yes. What is, give me your understanding of it. My understanding is that I won't lie. And that you could be prosecuted if you do? Of course. Have you ever had your deposition taken before? I was deposed once before in a case involving uh, Sharon Stone and uh, uh, a guy who wrote a tell-all biography about her. Who was that? His name is uh, Frank Sanello, and he wrote a book uh, about her, and he uh, quoted a lawyer that we met one time at dinner who gossiped about her. And when that got printed, the lawyer sued my friend. And since I was at the dinner, they subpoenaed me, and I went in and talked about what happened. Uh, your friend was Frank Sanello? Yes. Did he ever talk to you about Scientology, by the way? Frank Sanello? Yes. Uh, only the day that you, were, you guys were following me in 2008 when I, I had been protesting. You, I don't know what you mean by you guys, but uh, uh, so you, in any event. It certainly wasn't me. No, no. All right. <clears throat> did you live with Frank Sinello? Uh, years ago. <clears throat> when did you live with him? I lived with him, uh, it was about 1998 uh, and 1999. What's your relationship with him? We were homosexual lovers. Does he support you in your uh, current attacks on Scientology? I haven't talked to him for years. When I was subpoenaed in that issue involving his book, that was like 2000. So that was like 11 years ago. You haven't talked to him? In I talked to him once or twice in 2008. That was the last time. After you became involved in attacking Scientology or before? I never attacked Scientology. Well, let's say before or after. You could uh, say protest Scientology. Well, let's use that word for the moment. Before or after that. Um, I knew him before, and then I had just begun protesting when uh, that was the last time I saw him. That was in 2008. Okay, let me continue with my admonitions. The. Uh, court reporter here to your left will be making a verbatim transcript. You'll have an opportunity to review the transcript when it's completed to make sure that it was accurate. Mm -hmm. Understood? And uh, you can't say, mm-hmm. Yes, I'm sorry. It yes. Work in a yes or no. No nonverbal things, just verbal things. If you have any questions about anything or you're unclear about any question I've asked you, please ask me to clarify it, all right? Mm -hmm. Yes? Yes. <laughs> That's not very good. Yes. 
Are you uh, under the influence of any medication? Uh, unfortunately, I'm not going to answer any more questions. And the reason is, as she noted, that I don't have a lawyer. And I don't have a lawyer because you threw my lawyer out. And then, uh, if I was to get another one, uh, I can't find any because you're pressuring them, just like you pressured uh, Jeff Boyd's father, John Boyd, to not represent him. So it's very difficult for me to find a lawyer, especially since the one lawyer that I could get, Barry Van Sickle, is currently recuperating from uh, hip surgery. Also, you're going to have to explain to the judge why I can be recorded, but I can't record the deposition myself. And uh, there's just no reason that I can't record the deposition and place it on whatever website I want. Um, and also, uh, I was not at the event. And finally, if, when I am deposed, if, if I can get a lawyer, uh, I'll only talk about the raid on Gold Base in 2008, in which Mr. Chaquette was attacked. I'm not going to talk about where I went to high school. I'm not going to talk about who my donors are. I'm not going to talk about other raids. I'm just going to talk about what this case is about the day he got beaten up. And since I wasn't there, all I can do is give you secondhand information that other people have told me. So unfortunately, I've come here to try and fulfill my obligations, but because I do not have a lawyer and for these other reasons, I'm afraid I can't be deposed any further today. Well, let me, let's just get a few preliminary matters out of the way then before I actually ask you any substantive questions concerning this, all right? Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. Yes, yes. And the reason is because we'll be, we'll have to file a motion most likely respecting this. Mm -hmm. now, you, yes. You had a number of communications with Mr. Cantrell respecting setting up the date of this deposition, right? Yes. And at any time, did you tell Mr. Cantrell, I'm going to come to the deposition, but I'm going to refuse to answer any questions? No, I did not say that. And you were represented by Graham Barry. I was. Weren't you? Mm -hmm. And he decided to withdraw? Is that correct? I believe you forced him out. Oh, did he decide to withdraw or not? Uh, not from defending me. Did he tell you he, he wasn't going to represent you in this deposition? No, he didn't. He said he wanted to, but you're not letting him. Uh, I, <laughs> believe me, uh, I have no say over what Mr. Barry does or doesn't do or who he does or doesn't represent. It, it, in any it, event, you were represented by Mr. Was, Barry. Yes. He advised you with respect to this deposition initially and then he withdrew, correct? Yes. Did you, you also talked to another lawyer named Barry Van Sickle? I have not talked to him. Uh, we were hoping that he would be healthy enough that uh, we could make arrangements that he could come down here and possibly interview uh, me, uh, Casper, and uh, um, Resistance all in one day. Okay. But he is still, uh, has a broken hip. Who's he, Casper? Uh, what's Casper's real name? Doug, uh, no, Smith. no, it's. it's uh, Margolis is the last name. Uh, yeah, Doug. Drew. Drew Margolis. He's an anonymous member. You subpoenaed him, remember? Casper, the bald guy. You said that you'd never. When you saw him at the, uh, when you saw him at the um, Riverside uh, Courthouse a few months ago, you said. Oh, okay. He was the guy you said that I'd never recognize you without your. I've never seen you without your mask on before. Right. That's the guy. That's Drew Margolis. Yes. And you, his anonymous name is Casper? Casper. All right. And uh, who told you that Mr. Van Sickle would be representing you? No one did. We were hoping that he might be well enough to do that, but he's not. Who's we? My, my ex-lawyer, Graham Barry, and I. So you've, you've been coordinating with Mr. Barry with respect to getting other potential counsel? He's trying to help me. Unfortunately, most lawyers don't want to deal with Scientology. And so my choice of them is very limited. I assume you, you don't pay lawyers either? No. Uh, have you ever communicated with Mr. Van Sickle? Uh, I've met him uh, before when we were uh, in the, temporary, the restraining order case from 2008 with Lisa Uvizel. Whenever he was there that day. <clears throat> Did you uh, speak to Stuart Richland about this case? Uh, he didn't want to deal with it. Uh, he's involved with med medical marijuana. And he is 
So he has a, is it a disability he's got that he didn't want to represent you in this? He doesn't want to get involved in Scientology like that. Does Mr. Berry work for Mr. Richland, by the way? I really have no idea. Some of the emails that you exchanged with Mr. Choquette suggested that Mr. Richland was paying Mr. Berry to do some work for him. And I don't know. You'd have to ask him. I help him with his Scientology stuff. Help who? I help Graham. Graham Berry? Yes. What do you mean? You help I him? go and fix his computer when it's broken, and I run his computer systems. Is that why the, uh, the videos were provided to you from this incident where Mr. Choquette was arrested up at Gold? I'm not sure what that question means. Say that again. Can you rephrase were the, that? <clears throat> were any of the, uh, the videos that were taken uh, of the day of Mr. Choquette's arrest given to you? All of them were given to me by people who were there. Who gave you videos? Sock Puppy, Glib, uh, and Resistance. And who, what are the, those are the anonymous names of those persons? I don't know Sock Puppy's real name. Glib, you, uh, Glib, you uh, interviewed a couple weeks ago, and Resistance is, her real name is, uh, what's Resistance's real name? Oh, Patricia Curtis. Patricia Curtis, yeah. So Resistance is her anonymous name, her real name is Patricia Curtis? Mm-hmm. Yes? Yes. And you claim you don't know who Sock Puppy is? No. But Sock Puppy gave you a video. Sock Puppy gave me the video of him being beaten. Where's that video now? Uh, well, he has the original copy, and then you have a copy also. I have a copy. Are you, you claiming that was on the uh, hard drive you yes, provided yes. Mr. Kennedy? Yes, yes. An unedited, I think I mentioned that in the piece of paper that I gave everything to you with. Uh, an unedited uh, video of the attack taken by Sock Puppy. So all the originals were in your custody at, at some point? N no, they were just copies. The, the original, what well, was the original video from Mr. Choquette given to you? Yes, his, his video uh, was the point where he's driving down, he's walking down this, the road and then Danny Dunnigan gets out of his car and they start fighting. And uh, you were the one that first put that video up on the internet, correct? No, I think other people put up raw footage of the unedited video, or uh, the, the video was up on the internet uh, from several people, and I put up an edited version that was the entire event, mostly. Who, who told you to edit that version, by the way, before it went up on the internet? Uh, who told me to edit it? Yeah. Uh, I just asked for all the footage that everyone had, and then I edited it. The section where uh, Mr. Choquette approached the guards mm -hmm. uh, and he was talking to the guards and the guard was talking back to him, telling him he's trespassing. You remember that part of it? Yes. Right before he was arrested? Yes. And you edited out some of the, some of the language from Mr. Choquette and some of the times when the guard told him he was trespassing, correct? Yes. Why'd you do that? Uh, he felt that there was too much cussing. Who did? Mr. Chalkett. And yeah. since, the, uh, since the guard already said to leave several times, he, you know, it's the, it's the obscenity. So he didn't, Mr. Chalkett didn't want people to know that he had, uh, as you say, cussed the guard, correct? Yes. And you also, you also cut out uh, part of it where the guard told him he was trespassing. You cut out a couple of your trespassing quote, didn't you? Uh, that I don't remember. Uh, I, I probably might have, but I remember him saying several, that several times anyway in the video. And the video that you edited was the one that Mr. Choquette gave to the prosecutors, isn't it? 